Call ourselves to order. The first item on the agenda is public comment. And the chair requests that there be no public comment on issues for which a prior public hearing has been held before the Board of Directors. We have one change in our public comment this evening that I want to point out. Um, there will be a, an opportunity for the public to speak on specific items that are going to be discussed in the Metro Vision Plan between the staff presentation and prior to the committee discussion. So if there's, if there's public comment that people want to make specifically on some of the Metro Vision Plan, there will be a second opportunity be between the presentation and our discussion. Is there any, anybody that wishes to address the board this evening? Seeing none. Agenda item three, summary of April 1st, 2015 meeting. Any changes, additions, deletions? Seeing none, that will be accepted. Agenda item four, action items. Mr. Calvert. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Let me pull it up real quick. So we have spent uh, the last few meetings uh, talking about foundational me measures and foundational measures in the draft Metro Vision Plan. So this is kind of round three of this conversation. Uh, I'm going to do my best to be pretty short in the kind of the quick staff presentation. Um, a lot of the materials in your packet, some things that we've covered before, so I'm trying to mostly just cover uh, new information. This is, we are requesting an action uh, from, this, from this group this evening. A little bit about kind of what I'll cover, um, a quick uh, staff presentation, as I mentioned, mostly on maybe some, some new items uh, that, have, that have come forward since the last conversation. Uh, the, the chair mentioned kind of the revised way that we're handling public co comment. So if there is uh, someone in the audience that wants to address um, the committee prior to their discussion, uh, you are uh, invited and encouraged to do so. Um, we are going to, prior to really kind of getting going um, with your conversation, we're going to do a little keypad polling to take the temperature of the room a little bit, and then, as I mentioned, uh, we would like uh, this group to take action uh, this afternoon. A little bit about where we uh, left off. Uh, the last time this group talked, we talked about all 10 of the foundational measures, and one of the things that this group did is you actually asked um, the Transportation Advisory Committee, Committee to spend some time, I think the term that came up was noodling uh, a little bit more on some of the foundational measures, and so I'm going to the packet includes the TAC recommendations, and I'll summarize those um, briefly. Um, you also had some, some, some questions for staff uh, that we've also provided um, in the attachment, and there's been some sort of broader questions as well that have come up that I'll, that I'll handle um, in the presentation. Um, two very minor typos um, that we discovered uh, in uh, the, the memo and, and I think believe in the attachment as well both related to the same um, foundational measure, which is an alternate measure that was suggested by the MetroVision Planning Advisory Committee. Uh, the first is sort of the description of this measure. Uh, we used the term and, and it probably should have been or. I think you could probably make a case on, on either one of them, but just to be clear, this is about places that have been designated as urban centers as well as places that are served by um, high-frequency transit. Um, and then there was also on this measure on uh, page five of the attachment, which is page 15, uh, the PDF, if you are looking at the, at the online version, uh, a slight kind of copy and paste error happened here. Uh, the the, the uh, employment change uh, between 2005 and 2014 uh, in that, that geography was 11% and 14% um, in the remainder of the region. All these sort of analysis that this work supported was, was all accurate and consistent. It was just a copy and paste thing, which I'm sure we've all probably uh, lived through. So the, tra the trend information is really um, what you probably should pay attention to there. Um, and this kind of gets to the sort of and versus or thing that I mentioned. When we talk about that, that geography, the idea of places designated as urban centers or areas served by high frequency transit, this is what that looks like. And, and again, I think if you use the and, you could maybe come to the conclusion that it needed to be an urban center, but it also needed to be treated, um, uh, be home to high frequency transit, and it's not that. It's, it's more of an or. So here's what that spatially looks like. It's about five and a half percent 
um, of our of our region. So, quick reminder: uh, you know, we've been using the term foundational measure, um, but the reality is that this this is something that has, in many ways has been carried over uh, from from the previous adopted plan. Um, all the measures um, included in Metro Vision 2035 also had a target, and many of those have been carried forward um, in the draft that the, the INVIC and the board are, are considering. Um, the plan is really focused on overall plan performance measures. There are 75 measures that, have, that, have, that are in the draft, and the, the thing that sets apart these foundational measures is that, is that there's a target for the future for these. That's the only real difference between that and the sort of full set um, of measures. So there have been kind of a, you've had, this group has had specific questions about specific measures and targets, but you've had some broader things as well that you've asked that I thought it would be good to kind of quickly uh, cover up front. Um, and I'll talk about each of these sort of independently. Um, so, you know, why focus on, on measurement in general? Um, part of it is sort of the old saying was what, measure, what gets measured gets done. Um, but also it carries forward the intent of the previous plan. Um, one thing that I mentioned last month, and I'll just remind the group again, there is no mandate that we have, we have to have measures, we have to have targets. We, we are, again, sort of carrying forward stakeholder recommendations and the overall um, direction um, that the board gave us the last time around that we had a, had a MetroVision um, conversation. And this is also really aligned with our overall um, organizational strategic planning framework, um, and it's also a chance to kind of measure and track the collective impact of, of all actions um, in this region on these things that we are suggesting are important to us. And this sort of this shows you, and you probably have seen this before, that overall strategic planning model does highlight the importance of having uh, performance and, and measures and targets organizationally, and also with MetroVision, which in many ways is the, is the vision of, of, this, of the board of directors and of the region. Um, one other thing that has come up a few times is this, many of you at the board uh, uh, workshop were in the sort of cool tools um, conversation. We have state-of-the-art um, land use and travel uh, models that have really things that have been coming online um, in the past few years. And so the question has been, um, what can, how can we use our cool tools to sort of help out with this conversation? And I think the general answer is we can do that, but we're still probably some time away from really being able to fully maximize uh, those tools. They've really been um, developed to, to, to do the required um, things that they need to do, which were really about sort of forecasting um, long-term population and employment and how that um, impacts uh, transportation demand and, and things like that. But the really sophisticated analysis that this group has talked about, we're, we're some time away um, from really being able um, to do that in, in, in a really expedient manner being sort of the key issue. Um, we did scenario planning work back in sort of middle, late 2013, and every time we ran the travel model was taking us three weeks to a month to do that. So each single scenario is, 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 a, is a month or so. We are constantly looking to compress that time, but it's going to take some time to really get to where we can do that as quick as possible to really kind of answer the types of questions um, that have come up um, in the conversations this group has had. Um, another thing that we've heard, I know we heard it last time, I think we heard it the time before, is you know, we're talking about these regional measures, but how can my community contribute to, to these? Um, and the, two, the two things that I will point out is, understand these are always region-wide aspirations. This is, this is what the entire region is, is trying to accomplish. And this statement that's quoted on here is directly from uh, the draft plan. And frankly, it has lived in at least the past few versions of MetroVision. It's something that's, to me, a core value of the plan is that they're region-wide aspirations that, that individuals, communities contribute to in a way that's appropriate to the local circumstances and priorities, right? The expectation is not that everyone hits the same bar. The bar changes based on where, kind of where you sit and what your own um, local priorities are. And I'm going to give you two quick examples. I know one of the things that has come up is this idea of the, that, in particular, one of the things that you have trouble influencing is the location and the, and the, and the frequency of transit service um, and how the, and those things are, can be really tied to, to some of the goals. So just a few kind of examples as to how this sort of stuff sort of plays out. So foundational measure seven, um, which is about um, percentage of people using non-SOV modes um, to get to work. Um, this map shows you both origins and destinations of uh, car, our carpool regist registrants, people that have signed up through Dr. Cog to participate in a carpool. You can see this happens everywhere around the region, 
right? The green are the, are the origins, so this is someone's house where they're leaving from. Uh, the purple are the job locations that they're carpooling to. You can see it's, it's region-wide. Um, every community in some ways is participating um, in the ability to, to, to have people use um, carpools to get to and from work. Um, and after single occupancy vehicles, this is the second um, most um, frequent way that people travel to work. And so you can see this is happening throughout um, the region, whether there is high frequency transit service in, in that community or not. Kind of related to that, um, one of the things that this group has spent quite a bit of time talking about is this, this um, measure related to housing uh, plus transportation cost. Um, and so this kind of lays out what, in general terms, that formula looks like. Um, the, the really only four that are, that are related to actual transit service and transit availability. There's a whole set of other things that go into this formula to try to estimate uh, transportation costs that are more about land use patterns, frankly. It's about, it's about density, it's about and the number of households, it's about single family attached versus uh, multifamily, it's about the block layout, how, how connected are the streets. There's lots of things that go into that formula that ultimately spits out what the estimated uh, transportation costs are. So having access to transit is, is a part of the equation, but there are other things um, as well. So a little bit about kind of what's in front of you, just so you have a sense of the, the sequence of what's in the memo, but also kind of maybe how we'll walk through uh, the information. Um, first in the memo and first in the conversation are things related to transportation uh, and sort of two things. There was one measure that the, the last two times we've talked about this, um, you really haven't spent much time on. You did not ask that it go to TAC, um, and that's related to, to vehicle miles traveled and the measure and target associated with that. You know, over two meetings, you really haven't asked to to do much more uh, with that. And then there's a series of things that you did specifically request um, that TAC take up, and so um, their recommendations are uh, pr provided in your memo. And then we have sort of the remaining uh, foundational measures, some of which uh, you requested additional information from staff, and we provided um, that as well. Um, and, and, and when we were able to sort of unearth uh, new information since the last meeting, we've, we've included that as well, whether it's in uh, the memo or the attachment. So as I mentioned, um, on the VMT foundational measure of reducing uh, by 10% vehicle miles traveled in, in our region by per capita um, uh, by 10% uh, from 2010 to 2040, again, you, you really haven't talked about this. You haven't given us further guidance that you want to know more information, and this measure is um, carried over from MetroVision 2035. Uh, this, this sort of bundle of, of items that, that you asked TAC to take up, um, the one sort of caveat that I'll mention is kind of the, the asterisk that you see. You know, we walked TAC through every single one of these measures and targets. Um, in a few cases, they sort of were working on the fly and came up with a new way to think about things. And so, for instance, the, the housing plus transportation cost was something that they sort of changed the approach. So we weren't able to, on the fly, give them back the data to create a baseline that would allow you to set a target. So after the fact, frankly, like within hours after the TAC meeting, staff had to sit down and, and do some analysis so that we could give you baseline information for this conversation. And we've sort of have just put placeholder targets that can really be the place that you maybe you, you start um, your conversation. The rest are, are things that, that you've been talked about. Um, the requested information um, is in your packet. Um, there are two. Uh, that we did not really spend a lot of time on at the last meeting, so I'll spend just a few minutes on these just so that we kind of are up to speed with, with these two measures um, compared to kind of how we've treated some of the other conversations. Uh, last time around, we didn't quite, we were very close, but we weren't quite ready to have the data uh, for 2014 for um, the, the location of population and employment um, around the region, and we needed both of those data sets to, to give you the information on these, these two measures. Um, the first one is sort of your traditional urban centers measure, uh, which is the share of population and employment in those designated urban centers. Uh, the second one is a uh, supplemental measure uh, that was suggested by the MetroVision Planning Advisory Committee before, before that group stopped meeting that was to, to focus on not only urban centers, but also areas that are, that are well served by transit. Um, so those areas around the region that are within a half mile of a rapid transit station or a quarter mile of a high frequency uh, bus stop. And so we've now provided um, that information for the conversation uh, as well. So you saw similar information um, on the other measures last time. And so just quickly uh, on both of these, 
the, the overall target associated with the urban centers target, that first foundational measure, is kind of an extraction from the way that it was discussed in the previous plan. And the, the attachment kind of lays out the math for you there. But in terms of overall trend, um, we saw about a one percentage point increase um, of housing in urban centers between 2006 and 2014 and about a 1.3 uh, percentage point, not percent increase, but percentage point increase uh, uh, of employment. And I think it's probably doesn't need to be said, but recognize that that includes three years of a recession, right? So in, in many ways, the world stopped from a development perspective. So that's just something um, to keep in mind. And here's what that looks like. I showed you the map uh, of the urban centers plus the high frequency transit areas. So these areas, all 104 urban centers, if you add them up, really only equate to about 1% um, of, of our region's territory. And that's as of today. Obviously, we continuously add um, urban centers as proposed by local um, jurisdictions, um, if not yearly, um, quite frequently. And this is the other measure that you really haven't seen a whole lot on um, that, as I mentioned, was suggested by the by NVPAC um, back in November, December time frame. And to kind of give you an idea about the trend of that, this is actually declining. Um, in some ways. And so, th again, this is that geography that's urban centers plus areas adjacent to transit. Um, so we've seen a little bit of decline um, in terms of percentage uh, in this area and, and employment, um, close to a two percentage point uh, decrease um, during that period, 2005 to 2014, which I asked staff, I was like, are we sure about this? Like, I, this, this made me a little nervous as to whether this was right. And then I saw this, and it made perfect sense. This is, this is change in employment in those areas between 2006 and 2014. So you can see the blue are the, are, are, is that geography that we're interested in, and the green is the rest of the region. And you can see the recession hit those places particularly hard. And then the recovery has been a little bit mixed. And so that's, that's why you're seeing actually a decline um, in the percentage of, of jobs located in areas served by transit. I um, mean, in urban centers overall, again, just during this period, major national re uh, recession to deal with it has just really hit um, these places particularly hard. So that's it for sort of the, um, the background um, information. So as was mentioned, this will be an opportunity for public comment uh, between the staff presentation and discussion by the board. What I will ask is the same rules apply as all of our public comment. You'll be limited to three minutes. If you would please identify yourself and who you represent, and then you'll have your three minutes. And Connie is our timekeeper. Thank you. Will Tour with the Southwest Energy Efficiency Project. And I generally am very supportive of the proposed foundational measures. Want to speak to two in particular. Foundational measure number six on greenhouse gas emissions with the proposed goal of a 60% reduction to 2040, would want to encourage you to, to consider strengthening the goal a little bit. If you sort of unpack a little bit and take a look at what we would achieve through the combination of meeting the 10% reduction in per capita VMT and the federal fuel efficiency standards, which phase in from now through 2025, which will dramatically increase the fuel efficiency of, of our vehicle fleet, those two things together will get us almost all the way to that 60% target. And I think there are additional things that we could be doing as a region that focus on deployment of very fuel efficient vehicles, alternative fuel vehicles, electric vehicles, that could allow us to push a little bit beyond that. So I would encourage you to, to consider strengthening that goal. The other one I wanted to speak to is number 9B, which is a proposed measure of congestion through person delay per trip and wanted to really encourage you to uh, adopt that. It's a, a new measure coming out of the uh, Transportation Advisory Committee. And I think that it really does the best job of measuring the impact of congestion on people's lives. Many of the other measures look at things like percentage of roadways that are congested in the earlier version, or you know, the difference in travel time between the most congested and the least congested time periods. But what we actually experience is not only how congested is the road, but how long are the trips that we're taking on the road. And this measure of person delay per trip automatically essentially factors in both the trip lengths and the level of congestion, and I think gives the best measure of what people actually experience in their lives. So I'd really encourage you to look 
at 9B as a very good measure for congestion in a metro area. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Tour. Is there anybody else that would like to address the board? Seeing none, um, as Mr. Calvert mentioned prior to his presentation, we are going to, if you recall at the last MVIC meeting, I made kind of a feeble attempt to try to uh, get the things that I thought would be the least controversial out of the way first. And I think the first couple I picked were probably some of the more controversial. So we're going to do it a little bit different. What we're going to do is we're going to have polling uh, keypads, and we're going to s try to take informal polls on on these items as, as we go through and we're hoping that what we accomplish is that we can eliminate discussion on a group of them uh, maybe we can eliminate discussion on all of them um, that's not going to happen I'm sure um, but the the items that have uh, a good majority of people that are comfortable with them the way they are will eliminate them from discussion and we'll only discuss the items that look like we need to discuss. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor Cernanek. Just a, a question as we're going through the measures because uh, you know, I'm, I'm still um, uh, absent uh, uh, hearing what my mind would interpret as a crisp understanding of, of when we put the MVIC goals together because um, one of your slides, Brad, earlier talked about organizational strategic planning and then also regional planning. So those tell me two different things, because when I hear organizational strategic planning, it sounds like it's a Dr. Cog planning component, and when I talk hear regional planning, and you just squeeze those together in the same document, and now I don't know what we're doing. And so if, can you provide me a crisp piece when we're looking at the Metro Vision goals, Okay, are we looking to execute those, i.e. organizational planning, are we looking to execute those as our organization or are these measurements we're using for the entire region of which Dr. Cog will have some influence or impact on some, but knowing that we don't control the whole thing? I think the way that you just couched it is, is, is correct. The idea is that these are, these are regional measures. Um, the reason I try to bundle sort of the organizational structure with the MetroVision piece is that in many ways MetroVision is the front door to this organization. It's, it, it is the sort of thing that lays out the value statements of this organization and so therefore it, it makes sense to try to be consistent with how this organization wants to do business with w how that, that document and that, that philosophy um, uh, you know, is, is put together as well. So to, your, to, to, to sort of to put a bow on it, it real, these are regional measures that the degree of influence is probably from zero to nothing's 100% in terms of what this organization can, can influence. I mean, it, but it's what the board is saying is really important to you from an overall regional perspective. Okay. Council Member Stolzman. Yeah, I think this is a great idea just to kind of rein in what we're talking about and keep things on track, but I would request that if somebody has information that they'd like to provide that's not in the packet, that they speak up, even if it's a low n number count, because I'd be interested to hear their comments, even if I mean, it, it may be an idea I didn't consider that might change my opinion on the poll. Okay. Other comments or questions? All right. Mr. Calvert? <coughs> Do I have to do training on these or everybody know how they work, right? Uh, your last vote is the only vote that counts, so you can change your mind as long as the polling open, is open, that, that is, that's most important. The other thing that's probably worth knowing if you're trying to keep track is I'm going to actually follow the sequence from the memo. So it won't be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It will be whatever, whatever order that was because you can have that in front of you. Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem I, I just <laughs> find that, that order a little confusing to me. I, it makes more sense to go one through, but uh, if you guys are fine with it. Just go slowly. Yeah, because I'm trying to compare what we did last time with MVIC with what the new information was with my notes, and that was in order of one through 10. So 
I, I will go slow, and there's a definite pattern here that you will pick up. And I'm asking two questions on every single measure. So it, it'll be pretty easy to track if you can, again, I'll, we'll, we'll pause. And I can see when, when the numbers have, I can track the number of people that have voted. So I, I know when it's time to sort of call the question, and I, will, I won't cut it off until uh, we hit that number. And yes, Chair, if you could give me a number to look for, I think that's helpful. We got 18. 18. So again, you're going to see kind of repeats of this. So starting with number eight, which is the daily VMT per capita, the question that we're asking, you know, in general terms, are you supportive of this, of both the measure and the target? So the measure is per capita VMT, uh, and the target is to reduce uh, by 10% the level of per capita VMT between the years 2010 and, and 2040. And A for, for yes, you're supportive, a B for no, if you are not supportive of either the measure or the target. Well, I've already got, I've got 16 responses and there are 18 people in the room, so I know most of you are in pretty good shape. Now I've got 17. We will, we will go with what we, what we have. So everyone is supportive uh, of the measure um, and target on this one, which to me, it makes sense because you really haven't talked about this one and you didn't ask us to, to gather uh, more information, which you can tell me you want me to skip this one. This one is, do, if you have concerns, what, what concerns you? But I had 100% support on that. Do you feel like you need to talk about this or move on? Move on. Okay. So this is the greenhouse gas uh, emissions one, so foundational measure six. Um, in general terms, are you supportive of this measure and target as recommended by the Transportation um, Advisory Committee? Um, so this is, um, you know, measuring uh, surface transportation related greenhouse gas emissions and the target of a 60% uh, decrease between 2010 and 2040. Yes. I just want to clarify the voting. So if we were to take Will Tours recommendation and think about strengthening it, would we vote yes that we're supportive and then in the next question vote but we want to change it? Correct. So if you, so if, if you want, if you agreed with that and actually wanted to be more aggressive, I think for now you could vote no and in the following slide you would see what's the thing you want to talk about and you would say I want to talk about the target. When you see the next question I think it makes sense but we skipped that with the last one. Yes, I, I think let's 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 do it, and you tell me if I answered you correctly. I think we're good um, on this one. So about two thirds or so um, supportive as is um, the TAC recommendation, and so this this next one now gives a voice to kind of everybody. So what concerns you most about about the measure uh, or target? Is it is it the measure, the target? Is it is it both of them? Or then I want everybody to have the chance to vote. If, if you're back in that 65% camp and it's neither, you're generally supportive, I thought it'd be good for you to go ahead and, and say that as well. So not, not surprising to me because we have, we have quite a few folks that are, you know, in generally general satisfied, but if we are to revisit this, Mr. Chair, it seems like the, yes. the target is what people want to talk about with some folks wanting to talk about the measure um, as well. So again, repeating this now for foundational measure seven, um, non-SOV uh, uh, trips to work, um, supportive of measuring this um, and also having a target to um, increase to 35% by 2040 uh, the number of uh, the percentage of folks that are using non-SOV modes um, to travel to and from work. And this is a, this is a recommendation that comes from TAC. This one looks like it's in pretty good shape. 
So you can ask me whether you want to have, do you want to have the ne talk about the next one again and find out some more details? With, sure? Yes. Okay. Same thing again. I don't know if I have to read this to you. I think you got the, hopefully the pattern here now. been stuck on the same number for a while, so I assume we've got what we, what we need. So again, as based on the previous one, it's not surprising. Most are supportive, but it uh, seems like the conversation here is focused um, around the target. So we're now up to foundational measure 10. Again, a recommendation from TAC uh, related to traffic fatalities. So. Um, Measuring over time the number of surface transportation related fatalities and then the target of less than 100 per year uh, by 2040. Okay, with 94% with in, do you feel like you want to talk about the next vote on the next slide? No. Okay. So we are anyway. Okay. Uh, so on to foundational measure number three. We've spent some, quite a bit of time on this and do recognize that this this is a change. Tech, tech readjusted kind of how this measurement works. So hopefully um, that was communicated um, well enough to everybody. So share of the region's population living in areas where housing plus transportation costs are, are less than 45 percent of income for the, the, tip, the region's typical household. So again, this was a measure that, that I mean, measure that TAC came up with on the fly. Staff kind of had to put a target out there to get the conversation started and so we just, we, we've got 50 percent uh, by 2040 is, is something that this group can begin uh, the conversation on. Mayor Proto Malay. I, my question is, the, there was a concern that staff presented last month regarding the data that was going to be used to calculate this, and that, that was just national data, um, and that there wasn't information for the transportation costs at the regional level. And so I have a question about how that was addressed and if it was addressed, because the comments that I received back from TAC that from representatives at TAC were, were that that was still a concern to TAC and that they thought that this would only be a valuable measure. Um, first of all, they weren't asked whether, you know, that, that in order to make this worthwhile, uh, that it should, we should have the local transportation costs and that the Center for Neighborhood Technologies was not able to do that at the regional level. So could you clarify that for me? Uh, I'll try. Um, so the, a, a few things, that, I'll tell you what has happened since um, April and today in terms of, of what this group has talked about, really not maybe focusing on tax so much. Um, one of the things that staff struggled with and one of the reasons why we put out there that maybe this was not something that should be a foundational measure was that we were relying on a new um, sort of model data set from HUD related to this information. And since then, the Center for Neighborhood Technology has put out their second version of this measurement tool. And we had a lot more faith and confidence now that they have gone through the next iteration of that. So that was one of the things that really helped us feel more confident. It was just a weird timing thing that, lo and behold, you know, just in that month period, that gave us a little bit uh, more confidence with it. The other thing that happened is we actually had a conversation with um, someone that, that was on the development team and has continued to stay involved um, with that work with the Center of Neighbor for Neighborhood Technology and talked a little bit um, about our issues and, and they made us feel better about the, the, the national transportation um, cost piece is that in many ways it probably it, it is a wash and frankly there's the local data would be really hard um, to come from. And then the other thing, just quickly, that I think really made us, we were actually pleased with our attack ended up. We, staff supports this. We think they actually came up with a really good way to think about this. Um, I don't remember who said it, but, the, but the, the thing that sort of stuck with me was this idea of, you know, where you, where you live does impact your transportation cost. 
And the way that the measure was previ previously put in front of you really didn't get to that because it was this sort of regional average that someone that's paying 60% of their, their, call, their household budget for transportation and someone that's paying 10% is getting washed out um, over the regional level. And by looking at individual census block groups and understanding what percentage of the population are living in places that do have those lower transportation costs is ultimately what we were probably looking for. And so that's really where, when TAC came up with the solution, we, you know, staff agreed that it was, was, a, was a good fit. And just as a follow-up, I guess um, I'm very uncomfortable with this right now because from the what the message I got back from TAC was not that Brad that it was using national average was not very helpful, and the data produced is meaningless, and that we in the Denver region could be doing everything right um, and still not be able to move the needle on the national averages, and that even the way you just described it to me sounds like it's the housing piece of it that's going to be driving this uh, where you live and I know you're saying that's influenced by transportation but we're using national transportation and where you live it's still going to be driven by the housing cost so um, that, those are my questions you guys know how I'm going to vote on this one and uh, just just to quickly clarify um, TAC talks about every single measure that you asked them to talk about singularly right and, and, and hash through some of this but when asked, you know, when we got to the five measures that they agreed to sort of via straw proposals, do they, do they want to recommend this slate of uh, foundational measures to you? That vote was unanimous. They unanimously supported what's, what you're seeing in front of you today. Council Member Kanich. Thank you. Um, I, I've shared privately a little frustration with the staff about this, and I'm going to share it again. It's not true that this measure only uses national transportation data, and I wish that the staff would be a little more specific in clarifying that. There are five or six different transportation factors in this. Gas prices are local. Um, transit costs are local. The only national transportation data in this formula, if I'm remembering correctly, is the price of an automobile, which actually doesn't change price a lot from one state to another. So it's simply not, a and this is one of the differences where when we got the memo last time, the memo said only uses national transportation data. When they did the PowerPoint, which of course we don't get copies of before or after, it clarified this. It had, there were five different transportation pieces, three or four of which are local, one of which was national. And I think that this is a picky point, and I feel like, in part, I feel like this framing of it in the memo last time was very misleading. And then I clarified this afterwards to say, and I, and I thought that the person that they connected with clarified it as well, that there is locally priced transportation data in the formula. So I'm just, I'm asserting that, and I'm asking Brad, can you please clarify that that is correct? That is correct. Okay, so it's not true that the transportation prices are just pulled from a national average. Cost of car is the one national data point. So transit pass, transit prices, gas prices, all the things that vary a lot locally are all locally priced in the model. So. I, just if that helps you feel better. I mean, I, the clarification about how your TAC folks felt, that's obviously I can't touch that. But there, this piece is, and, and this is all very well documented. So if folks need to see it in writing, I would ask that staff maybe send it out in writing so that everyone can see that there is actually local data in there. I think that might be helpful since there's been confusion. Mayor Cernanet. And I'm going to ask a slightly different question around this. Uh, Knowing what we want to, to get at is, is somewhat how our mix of housing and transportation cost fits in the region. Was any consideration given, rather than looking at a measure within ourselves, of actually looking at how we might be a, on a comparison to those uh, MPOs that we might consider ourselves competitive with? Uh, so that we're looking at oh, how is our ranking on that because that is actually more meaningful to me because the economy is going to go up and down, things might get impacted, uh, you can call it uh, diversity and in income or whatever that might be. Uh, for me it's, it might be more meaningful if we act, actually looked at uh, our data but on a ranking basis rather than setting an internal target that we wanted to be in the you know, best 20% or best 25% or something of that nature. 
rather than trying to look at an absolute number. Any consideration of that? So no, we, there was no consideration of that. That it, you know, in, a lot of what you're seeing is really coming from stakeholder input. But one of the reasons to me to measure these things is to do that sort of analysis, right? If we are routinely doing this and other folks are having the same conversation in their regions, this is the type of thing that we can report. We can report how we are doing, and they can we can report how we're doing compared to what we might view as our as our peers. Okay, so on foundational measure three, uh, we are to the question of whether or not you're supportive. So uh, using the keypad, if we can vote on this one now. So I think we'll spend some more time on this one is my guess. So same follow-up question for, the, for everyone, but if you have concerns, um, is it the measure itself, the target, is it both? Um, and then if you're generally supportive, then you, know, you can echo that again. We've been holding steady for a bit, so I'll Go ahead and click on that one. Uh, so both, really. I mean, for the for those that have a concern, it's it's across the board. It seems like. Okay, going on to we have sort of two options on on, on this one. Um, this is and they're not really options. You you could we could ultimately have both. This is not really an option. It's it's just very similar measures that have, we've had two kind of versions sort of um, come to the surface. So. Uh, travel time variation. So, in term, general terms, of, are you supportive um, of us measuring this um, over time? And this is the uh, variation between peak and off-peak uh, travel time, uh, with a target of 33% um, more time needed to make complete a trip and peak period um, versus um, off-peak. Yes, yeah, so the, the question is, can you explain the numbers a little bit more? I, I think it, hopefully my explanation is, is pretty straightforward. So the way that this measure works, it really is comparing how long a trip takes um, when there is no traffic compared to how much time it takes with traffic. Right? So if you can complete a trip in 10 minutes on a Saturday morning, if you try to complete that same trip during AM and PM peak period times when there's congestion, it takes you 12.2 minutes. And so honestly, this measure is about getting, not getting more worse, right? The idea is we are going to continue to have quite a bit of variation between those trips. So let's try to only have a, a third um, longer that it takes to complete a trip um, during those peak periods. Correct. Uh, say that again. Yeah, bigger numbers, greater variation. What it means is it's going to take you more time in peak periods than it would be if it, there was a smaller number. Can, can you use the mic so that, thank you. Why is the target a bigger number than the baseline? Because, somebody correct me, the trend was to get to 1.45. Correct. Um, so this is honestly getting less worse is sort of the, the goal here. So we know that in this region by 2040, we're going to add 1.2 million people and a half million new jobs. We know that congestion in absolute terms is going to continue to increase. This measure says, can we kind of limit the scope of that increase so it's not as bad as it otherwise would be? Less worse and more better. Exactly. <laughs> well said. Uh, so we've got three quarters, give, give or take, that are supportive um, of, of the measure uh, and target, and, and obviously the remainder um, not supportive. So again, let's let's fill in a little bit of detail here. Um, if you have concerns, what are they? And then if you are supportive, let's go ahead and Say that again. Yeah. 
so on this one, again, you know, roughly half or so were, were, were generally supportive, um, but the targets seem to be where, where, where people were landing that we do have some folks uh, that are concerned uh, with the measure as well. Uh, so this is the alternative um, congestion measure that was described previously during, during the public comment. This is how that impacts people. Um, so th the amount of delay for each person um, uh, making a trip. So again, if you're supportive of the measure, um, yes, no, and then you can see the target. Then I will just sort of say again, this is something that was sort of come up, came up, the TAC came up with on the fly, and so staff sort of had to piece together baseline information to put this target in front of you. Commissioner Jones. Just point of clarification, am I right in understanding that this measurement takes into account all trips, so bike, head, transit, bus, rail, as well as vehicles? Anything in vehicles on roadway, so it is bus, so it, it, it correct me if I'm wrong, it, it, it does not have walk and bicycle because they in essence have zero, but if we're measuring mobility then um, you would be, they could account for in, in this equation if you actually had the number, the percentage using that mode. I mean, it seems like what I'm trying to find out is that do either of our FM9 measures actually take into account our investment in fast tracks, for example, or bike ped? Because it seems like that would be something we'd want to be measuring. Well, clearly the, the, mode, the mode share one clearly does that. That's our 35% goal, our current one. Yeah, I'm and referring then, to the congestion. And, and then this one version. has this one at the moment, and we can adjust it. But at the moment, it's divided by all trips in vehicles, on, in motor vehicles on roadways. So it does have buses. So it does have buses. So all of our rail investment would not be counted in this. OK. Well, that's something to work on. OK. Okay, quite a bit of support on this one, though um, so, some are not supportive as, as currently uh, proposed. So again, uh, thoughts on this, what concerns you, measure, target, both, if you're generally kind of okay, I'm going to go ahead and echo that as well. So of those that, that, are, that are struggling with this, it, it tends to be the, the target, probably the thing that is what folks uh, may want to talk about, though it's pretty evenly spread of those that, that are interested in discussing this further. Uh, so going on to foundational measure two, um, so housing density within the urban growth boundary um, area. So uh, the recommend, the, the, that's the, the measure, uh, target of increasing uh, by 25% between 2014 and 2040, and so um, yes or no on this one? <clears throat> so we had a pretty similar split earlier, so about three quarters um, supportive and a, and a, and a quarter um, not so much. So again, Phil, let's help fill in some details here. What's the thing that concerns you about this? If you have a concern, and let us know if you're if you're still in favor. Uh, so it definitely looks like the target is the point of conversation here. We're getting close to the end here. Uh, foundation measure, measure four, um, cost burdened households. Uh, Invic did request some additional information about um, this measure, which was included, I believe, both in the memo um, and in the attachment. So with the revised measure, which is the share of the region's households earning less than $50,000 per year that are housing cost burdened and the associated target, in general terms, are you supportive um, of, the, of the measure and target as recommended by staff? I, I am a... Councilmember Shockley. 
Are we worried that 50,000 means something different in 2040? Is that addressed somehow? Unfortunately, this really it's not adjusted for um, inflation. It's just st straight um, Census Bureau observations, right? So this, this could change, but this is something that we could track and make a decision later. Is there a different way that we want to measure this? Council Member Kanich. Yeah, to that point, I was just going to clarify. I mean, in terms of we are somewhat dependent on the Census Bureau data, but if in 2020 or 2030 they choose a different measure because inflation has made this irrelevant, I feel like it'd be easy enough to re-benchmark, but at least we'd have something that was, to, to um, Phil's earlier point, everybody across the country has the same data. We could see how we are comparatively, and it's we don't have to do anything. We just get it from them. So I had that same concern. That's how I talked myself through it. <laughs> So I think all the votes are in. So basically 50-50 on this, so probably some conversation needs to be had. Uh, so again, let's, let's fill in some details. Uh, what concerns you the most? Um, if you are concerned, and then let us know again if you're, if you're pretty much on board. Probably everybody. Oh, there we go. Uh, so pretty much a little bit of everything. Uh, measure and target. A pretty um, fair number of folks interested in talking about both of those. So foundational measure one, uh, housing and employment uh, in urban centers. So that's been the long-standing sort of share of regions housing and employment uh, located in these places and then the target of uh, twenty five percent of the region's housing and fifty percent of the region's employment by twenty forty. I've been holding steady at this number, so I'm gonna go ahead and see what we got. <laughs> That's pretty easy. So tell us more. All right, three, two, one. Uh, so both measure and target probably should be talked about. Uh, so this is kind of that, that alternate or supplemental uh, measure that again was suggested by um, um, MVPAC. As I mentioned, there is no target. So here we're just sort of asking, you know, staff's recommendation is that we, we had already committed to, to measuring this as part of the overall plan performance uh, measures. Are you okay with that recommendation of continuing to measure it? but not necessarily having a target and not making a foundational measure. If, if, if you're okay with that, then that's, that obviously leads us one direction. If, you, if you're not, then maybe that's, that's a different conversation. Okay. So roughly kind of the three-quarter quarter, quarter um, split that we've had uh, previously. Uh, last one, I think, um, so the health facilities one, so the share of the health facilities in the region that are in urban centers, rural town centers, or near uh, high-frequency transit, um, increasing as a target to 75% um, by the year 2040. So in general, are you supportive? I'm going to go ahead and click here. So <laughs> basically 50-50 again. So tell us a little bit more. Concerns that you have, measure, target, both. I 
think that's everybody. So, so both. Both measure and target are, are, are sort of up for conversation. All right. So hopefully you have something to help you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I'm not sure what we accomplished. No. Uh, <laughs> all right, so I'm going to go back real quick. Um, the uh, foundational measure eight was unanimous, so uh, obviously I don't think there's any discussion needs to be done on that one. Uh, foundational measure seven was 82% support, 18% non-support. So I'm going to say that we don't need to spend time on that unless somebody has a burning desire to a non SOV vehicles from 25.5% to 35% by 2040. So at 82%, I'm going to say that's something we can move forward. Okay, seeing nobody jumping up and down. The next item is foundational measure 10, which is traffic fatalities. That was 94 to 6. So once again, I'm saying we move that forward. Councilmember Stolzman. I did just want to make a comment that last time we talked a little bit about this, and I would just want to say again that I think it's not too aspirational to just say the target would be zero. I think with technology changes in the future and what we're really trying to do, I think zero would be a good goal to do here. But I'm supportive if the group just wants to move on as it's published. Okay. The next one that was fairly overwhelming was 9A, 72% to 28%. That is more than a super majority. So I'm suggesting that we move that forward unless somebody has a burning desire to discuss it further. Seeing nobody. 9B, person delay. That was 83 to 17. So once again, I'm suggesting that we move that forward. Commissioner Jones. I, I would support that, but I would like to hear back from staff on our ability to add in um, non-road related modes in order to make this truly meaningful and, and again reflect our investment in fast tracks and other modes. Steve. And, and I can actually clarify here one right now we are contacting our mo modelers upstairs just to clarify that um, we can have that and that's probably what we should have had in here originally and just for FYI the, the baseline value would be 1.7 minutes this is rounded uh, and we would still suggest the same goal of two minutes, and that's divided by all person trips. So it's pretty comparable, but we, we can do that. And so we clarified that. So I just got what I want in about 30 seconds. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes. Sweet. And I just have a- Mayor Pro Tem Yeah, uh, just a clarifying question then. Are we, are we gonna discuss whether we have both 9A and 9B or one or the other, or yeah, I-, I I think we need to have that discussion, what the value of having, do we want both of them? Are we gonna add in a foundational measure? There's more discussion there as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Uh, the next one I'm gonna look at is foundational measure two, which is housing density within the UGB, UGA. That was 72% support, 28%. Again, using my logic of supermajority, I would propose we move that forward. What Council Member Kinney. What number was it? I'm sorry. I uh, it uh, two. Two. Thank you. 75. Thank you. The uh, next one that I'm going to mention is foundational measure one, which was 71% support. So again, I'm going to recommend that we move that. Excuse me, 1A. Um, it is, this is one that has no proposed target and it's share of regions housing, which is currently uh, within half mile of rapid transit or quarter mile of high frequency bus stop. Current, met, current 54%. So could you just clarify, we're, based on that vote, we're not moving it forward as a foundational measure, just a performance measure? Correct. Okay. So let's go back then to the items that need more discussion. And sequentially in our packet, the first one that I see is six. And if you look on page two, oh, 
we got it up on the screen, so we don't need to necessarily look it up. Uh, Commissioner Jones. Um, I think that the reason the voting wasn't higher for this was because um, we had a suggestion that perhaps we should consider strengthening that, and that was certainly the basis of my vote, and I think potentially others. Um, so I guess the, for the purposes of discussion, I guess I would like to look at increasing that target by 10 percent. Um, the analysis that we were provided during public comment basically said that based on the, the achievement of the federal CAFE standards that are already under works, we don't have to do anything nor do we have any control over them, and our goal on VMT, we're going to meet this goal regardless of, of whether or not we do anything more or less. So that if we actually want to make this something that we, we work towards, such as through alternative fuel vehicles, um, that we should add a little bit, we should strengthen that target. So I guess I would throw that out there for discussion uh, to increase this target by 10 percent. So the 2010 baseline is 26.8 and uh, the target proposed is 60 percent. Your proposal is to change that to 70 percent. Okay. Councilmember Plass. I would support that 70 percent as well. My no vote was because I wanted to see the number increased and I I think that we ought to challenge ourselves a bit, and I think that extra 10 percent, if we put that in there, will provide that challenge kind of over and above what we've already seen is going to happen from the CAFE standards and the trends, so I would be supportive. What I would suggest then is, since we know that we have at least two people, Council Member Shakti. Are, are you postponing that discussion? What I was going to because gonna, I can wait if you are. What I was going to say is that since we have at least two that voted no, based on w the desire to strengthen it, and this was a 65 to 35, that may sway it into a supermajority, or it would actually. So um, I guess I would recommend that we, if there is discussion, we have the discussion, but then we do a, a show of hands to see where this is based on the increase that is proposed by Commissioner Jones to 70 percent. Council Member Shock. I, I just wonder if we have some logic on um, how, how much increase we think we might see from these alternative fuels or whatever other approaches there are to addressing the issue. Commissioner Jones. Um, I think that I mean, I've asked that question and have been given about that a 10 percent goal would be a realistic, a, 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 an ambitious but realistic goal to shoot for over the time frame we're looking at. I think one way we could move forward is I think Bob's math is correct that there is a supermajority support for this measure and that if, if, if more staff analysis on the a 10 percent increase in the target would be appropriate we could sort of conditionally move forward. We know we want the, the measure in there and we're noodling on the exact percentage of the target. So I don't think that we can make the assumption, at least I'm not comfortable making the assumption that those two votes are necessarily added to the 65% because there might be some people that don't support the increased amount from 60 to 70. So what I'd like to do is ha have a show of hands of the number of people that are in support now of increasing this to uh, a 70 percent decrease between 2010 and 2040. Uh, Bob, I mean, I, I just think it seems so capricious to, to just say, oh, let's do 10 more, let's do 10 less, let's do 15 more, let's do 20 less. I think we need to have facts and data to support this. With all due respect to, to Will's comments um, and, and my commissioners from Boulder, from Boulder I, you know, I want to hear what my staff says. I want to hear what tax says. I, I mean, I'm supportive of, the, of, you know, having a measure that looks at this, but what that target number is, if we're going to, I don't want to change it on the fly tonight by a show of hands. And I'm not saying I, I wouldn't be supportive of it eventually. I just, want more just to clarify, I was also suggesting right. not changing on the fly. I was suggesting that there is a supermajority support for having a target related to greenhouse gas reduction. So we can, we can put it in that category and then throw it back to staff to bring us back more data on whether or not a 70 percent decrease would be a, a realistic goal. So I was suggesting to postpone that piece of the discussion. Okay. I'm, I, I think that clarifies it for me. I'm good with that. Um, 
Councilmember Teal. Yeah, actually, uh, I mean, I agree with the approach to go ahead and I think we have a first wave on this as a good foundational measure. But I mean, um, you know, uh, if Mr. Tour indeed has done the math to say that sure we're going to hit 60, but we can hit 70, we can hit higher, yeah, I'd like to hear analysis to say how that math was there. I don't really want to be making decisions. I don't want to be throwing out numbers where we're just hoping and praying for science fiction to come true. I'd rather see some of that math and have a feeling for the likelihood, the risk reward for doing something like that. So I think the suggestion that I would support and I, I hope would move forward is that we are good with moving this forward with the understanding that staff is going to do some more noodling to see whether or not 60% or 70% or what that good number is. Is everybody comfortable with that? Council Member Stolzman. I voted no on this and I do support the foundational measure and I, I also support additional information to make the decision, but I'm not comfortable with the information we've been given to decide to do this on a per person basis rather than an absolute. And I, I thought we were going to see more information than we did to address that. And I would hope that we could see that next time because I think that might just even keeping these same measurables, but put it into absolute terms and then see if that does something that we want or not. In tax okay. input. Yeah, I, I thought we were going to get, I mean, tax said they weren't for that, but I don't understand why. And I didn't see the information in the way that I thought we were going to see it. It looks like Mayor Horn, but her name tag's over here, so I'm not sure. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot <laughs> to bring it back. Um, and I'm in favor of this as a measurement. I just think we can do a whole lot of work on this, and it's going to all be based on on conjecture and projections because if we do an absolute it depends on what we think the population will be and nobody can know for sure and if we do calculations we could be at zero if we go to hydrogen fuel but you know I think it's all going to be based on some speculation I think we have some uh, commentary from staff on the discussion that took place at TAC Thank you, Mr. Chair. Jacob Rieger, Long Range Transportation Planning Coordinator. Um, so we did have this conversation with TAC about um, expressing this target in terms of per capita or total emissions. Either way, you know, the, the target, you know, is a decrease. Um, but that, that question, just how do you express it? We did walk through the math with TAC. Uh, and after, you know, using the term noodling on the numbers, uh, TAC was comfortable with the per capita uh, recommendation. We can certainly bring you the math if you want to get lost in the weeds of the numbers. But TAC did consider it. And after considering it, um, you know, voted uh, for per capita expression of this target. And I think I am hearing a desire for that information to be brought forward. Councilmember Plus. So I, I'm not so interested in the weeds, but I'm interested in the why. <laughs> so, because there, I mean, you know, when you talk about per capita versus total, I mean, is there a sentence that describes that? Jake. Let me try to answer that and ask Steve to, to um, help me. I, I think, I don't remember if there was a specific rationale of, you know, someone from tax it's because of this reason, but I think in general, this type of measure, I mean, we're adding 1.2 million people. You've heard me say that already. And so, you know, you can kind of get lost in the fact that, you know, yes, emissions go down, but you're adding more people. And, and so it kind of lends itself as a per capita basis. It's maybe a little bit more of, a, uh, of an easier way or a, or a truer way to kind of get at what's happening with greenhouse gas emissions because part of your equation, which is the number of people generating those emissions, is changing between now and 2040. And the per capita gets at that in a way that total emissions doesn't. The current model results that we have, and these were put up on the screen for TAC, current model results show the reduction with our current assumptions of type of fleet, type of vehicles, you know, whether right or wrong, of about 40%. So our current model results do not reach that 60% per capita uh, reduction. So and we, we laid that out to TSA. I think that's what you're, you're, you're getting at. So 
under the current assumptions in what's called our EPA moves model, we're making progress and our current model shows that, but it does not reach the 60% per capita reduction. Yeah, there is a threat. Huge threat. Yeah, I, I, I think the bottom line is that staff has heard that the board would like to have more information on this, so yeah, they'll come back with more information. So uh, I've got I've got three. I've got uh, Teal and then Atchison and then Malay. So Council Member Teal. Well, by all means, I mean, if we want to have staff do more work, but I mean, that just answered everything for me. You know, our current model says that 60% is aspirational. It is not indeed a certainty that we will hit it. Therefore, I'm, I would actually propose that we, uh, we sit right here. We sit right here with this. We do not noodle on it anymore. We move forward with this as a foundational measure sitting at 60% because it sounds to me like the model we have right now, 60% is aspirational. It is that stretch. Um, Mayor Atchison. George, you got to quit taking all my thunder. Darn it. I got nothing left. But to your point, uh, with based on what staff just gave us, that modeling at the best that we have today at 40%, and we're already asking for 50% more than the model says we can even achieve, what are we gaining by looking at a higher percentage? And I agree with George. I think we leave it alone at 60%. Mayor Pro Timoli. Uh, my comment was to suggest that we vote again, given the information that Steve just shared with us, to see what the percentage is. Councilmember Shakti. Uh, so I think that the information Steve shared is helpful um, and might affect what we want to do on this, but I don't see any reason to make our decision based on sort of text between staff happening when we can just get more processed information. So I don't see any harm in delaying. Okay, kind of a mixed bag. Um, Commissioner Partridge. I will second the revote. Okay, so there is a motion and a second to. It was a, I'm going to change it to it was a motion. I'd like to see the data, so it is a motion to, to do a revote just to see the data. It's a data point. So to revote based on what we the discussion that the board has just had and the information provided by staff and the uh, expanded discussion of, that occurred at TAC. Okay. So there is a motion and a second for a revote based on the information provided just now. Yep. Um, any discussion? So we are we are revoting based on the 60% decrease Vote on the motion to do it. Okay. Motion to take the vote. All right. All right. Mo so there is a motion to revote on the floor. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. <laughs> Go get them, Brad. I think this is old fashioned, maybe. This may be hands. All right. Yeah. So we are, can we have a So, so we are, we are going to, we are going to re-vote on uh, foundational measure six. How many are in favor of the, as it is written at 60%? Opposed? Abstentions? The numbers don't count up, add up. All right. Okay, so uh, that passes foundational measure six. So the next one that we're going to discuss is foundational measure three. Foundational measure three is in the middle of the of page two, the middle of the box in page two, and it is housing and transportation costs. 
Mayor Pro Tem Malay. I, I just I have a clarifying question because I I got information from my staff representative TAC that this was not a unanimous vote to move all of these forward. And since uh, staff informed this evening that it was, I did text my staff member to say, hey, why did you tell me that if that wasn't the case and was assured that this was not a unanimous vote to move all of these forward? So uh, it would be helpful for us, I think, to have the minutes from TAC, uh, particularly when we uh, send this stuff out because that's important. I mean, we do weigh what they say. Um, and I guess I would like some clarification on whether or not it was unanimous or it wasn't unanimous or what actually did happen that 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 did tax say unanimously that all of these most foundational measures should be moved forward. That, that's what I'd like to know. Mr. Rieger. Yes, so let me clarify that. What we did with TAC is we went through each of these kind of informally. We had a discussion and head nods or maybe hand vote, I don't remember, but kind of an informal, you know, what do you think on each one of these? But we only had one official motion at the end as a slate of recommendations to MVIC. So as we discussed them individually, some of them sort of informally were unanimous and some were majority but not unanimous. But when we got to the one official motion at the end to move the slate forward to MVIC, that motion, which was the one official motion, was unanimous. Okay. So entertaining discussion on uh, Housing and Transportation Cost Foundational Measure 3. Commissioner Jones. Well, I don't know if we're going to be able to wrestle this to the ground today, but I have to say that um, um, after the last MVIC meeting, I felt like I personally didn't have enough information about the modeling, and I went back and I um, talked with my staff and um, got a report back on the TAC discussion. And the actual model that's used is was much more robust and respected and used by sit in cities around the country than I had realized, and I think the presentation at the last MVIC portrayed. Um, HUD's really invested a lot in this model, and as was pointed out by staff, there's new updated data. Um, and so I actually came away feeling much more solid in what was being proposed after understanding the model. And I don't know if, if we can, I think it would be helpful for other people to have that information too because it very significantly affected how I, my comfort level with this. So I don't know, again, if we can wrestle this to the ground in this meeting. If not, then I would recommend that staff um, actually provide that information to everybody so that we can all be equally educated on um, the modeling that was being suggested for this equation. Mayor Horn. So um, that might be helpful because I would, I guess my biggest question would be where are we now? Um, if we're anywhere near 41 percent now with the significant increases in housing that we're experiencing at least monthly if not daily and not seeing salaries go up at the same rates, I don't, I, I'm unclear on how this is achievable. Lo a lovely idea. I just, I just don't know how we'd get it. Mayor Cernanet. Oh, Cal Cal Council Member Stolzman. Thank you. Um, I'm very supportive of this, but I do think the foundational measure is worded in a very um, cumbersome way, and I would think if when it comes back, it would be nice to see if there was some way to make it just much more straightforward, because I am supportive of the foundational measure, just not the language. Mayor Cernanet. On, on this, um, trying to put this into a policy type question for the Metro Vision. Uh, my impression is, is this is trying to say, um, are we becoming a more prosperous region uh, and have that shared uh, across the region? And I'm not necessarily opposed to this as somewhat indicative, but uh, I'd also like to hear a, a broader discussion of what might be other alternatives to get at what I see as the policy objective that we're trying to reach. Councilmember Um 
So that was, I was trying to think about how to weigh in on this, and Mayor, your comment was helpful. I, I don't think about this as much as a prosperity measure as I do an accessibility measure. So if I'm a major employer and I'm thinking about coming to a community, I kind of want to know where my employees will, what, what will my employees' quality of life be? And so maybe housing is a little more expensive, but transportation is cheaper, right? Maybe transportation is a little more expensive, but the housing is cheaper. I mean, we actually have both kinds of areas in our region. And so um, this, to me, is actually helpful to say, you know, how much of your population is living in a region? And so it might be a suburban community with higher transportation costs but lower housing. Or it might be an urban, you know, urban area with higher housing but lower transportation. In the end, my employees have several accessible options. And, and, and so for me, it's, it's really about how easy is it to kind of have a good quality of life? And obviously the income, right, the prosperity of your income makes the measure matter. So to Sue's point, yeah, if incomes stagnate while everything else grows, you have a problem. But I do think that it kind of shows across the region, are a lot of people living in accessible places or not? And so for me, you can tackle that, you know, through policy in, in either way. You can tackle it on the housing side, right, by getting more people into home ownership or doing, you know, you know, affordable, dedicated, or whatever method you want to use. You can tackle it on the transportation side by, you know, helping to create housing options near transportation that are simply locationally less expensive, transportation-wise, whatever. So I, I think that the thing I like about this is it's really good for the diversity of the region. Right? It kind of captures different kinds of communities that are accessible based on where they land on either side of the formula. So I, I think it's a really good one. Maybe, maybe even more permissive than something that was just focused on housing affordability, which is where I might have wanted to go. <laughs> but I can really live with this as a counterbalance to that. Mayor Pro Tem V. Hill. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I, I agree with the newly elected, uh, re elected <laughs> council re -elected. from Denver. Uh, uh, you know, and, and I can use uh, my city as an example. You know, with with 125,000, uh, the housing is actually uh, uh, a lot lower than other places, but the transportation costs are huge. And so, what we have in our cities, we have 85% of the citizens work outside the city, and so that causes a huge problem. So, to me, this information is very important as we try to bring in uh, primary jobs into the vicinity itself and, and it, it makes it a heck of a lot better a, a better selling point to say we have our citizens would rather work in the area than spend X amount of dollars in transportation costs moving somewhere else and so I think this is a key issue for for economic development and, and, and to actually kind of try to balance the region I think that one of the, the, the problems that we have throughout the region is that you know, uh, cities are, are, are competing against each other for, for employment, primary employment, and we're not seeing what we're doing to our transportation needs. Uh, you know, it's it just causing havoc in, in the whole region itself. So I think this is very, very key. Mayor Pro Tem um, First of all, I, I do still have, I would like to, to understand how the calculation occurs because I do think it is a very, very important measure. But from my perspective, I see it more like 1A. It's something, you know, the measure 1A that we're going to keep track of because it is important and relevant to all of us, but, but we're not going to put a target associated with it. And, and that's probably where my concern is, is putting a target here because I have a real concern about the ability of this organization to set policy to drive any real change to that target and and you know where I come from when I set a target I want to take steps to achieve that target and to to I feel somewhat handcuffed as a Dr. Cog board member to do things to uh, at this board table to do things to affect real change on this issue. Um, and because I can't affect real change on this issue, putting out a target goal I feel is very misleading to the public uh, because there would be an expectation that I would meet that target. And um, uh, so, so 
my primary concern is really understanding and really getting a little bit more comfortable with the calculation of it. I think it is an important data. I think it's important for this region, just like I think a number of things are important for this region that we at the Dr. Cog board table can't affect change. It doesn't mean we shouldn't keep an eye on them. And even the discussion at the table focused kind of on economic competitiveness. Uh, I, um, I don't think that that's our primary job. I think it's something we need to keep track of, but moving it into a, a targeted foundational measure, I have a, a real strong concern about doing that. Council Member Plass. So actually I have a strong concern on the other side. I think it's very appropriate and um, I think we can affect change and we can affect change through where we put our transportation dollars. We can uh, affect change through, and of course this is Metro Vision, so we're trying to provide the vision for communities in our region, but through you know, where we put our transportation dollars, how, the housing choices that we make as communities, whether you know, where we put our housing, what the, what the housing types are. And so I really do think, I mean, yeah, we can't affect salaries so much or incomes, but I think on the other side of the equation, as Robin was saying, we, we do have a chance to effectuate change. And, and so I think it's very important, and, and I'd like to see the targets stay in. So, uh, excuse me, Mayor Pro Well, and initially when this was brought up, I asked staff to come back with how, how is it, what is it that we would do to affect that? Because I don't see our transportation investments from Dr. Cog. I see transportation investments from RTD making a difference here. But, um, but the Dr. Cog investments, I, that's what I'm trying to understand, and that's why I, I did ask for more information. What is it that we could be doing uh, from Dr. Cog's perspective? And, I, and I, it still isn't clear to me. So, um, I, you know, and, and I really hope I'm making myself clear in the sense that it's not that I don't value this or think it's important. What I'm struggling with is my ability to actually do something about it and to, uh, from my Dr. Cog seat, from my City of Lone Tree seat, and, and uh, I, I understand that's a different thing. So I'm going to just real quickly go back to what Commissioner Jones originally said, and that, that is that we're probably not going to wrestle this to the ground tonight. Um, and I would suggest that staff has heard a lot of suggestions of more information that this board would like to see and hear and um, I, I think that it would probably be appropriate for us to ask staff to go ahead and and start down that road and understanding we're not going to come to resolution on this tonight um, if, if there is other discussion I certainly won't cut it off but um, I just wanted to kind of see if we can move forward Commissioner Jones well, um, I think you're on the right track, Bob, in terms of moving this forward. And I think it would be helpful to get some information by, from staff. I was going to start answering the question about how I think Dr. Cog can actually affect, move the needle on this one with with um, how we uh, in how we invest in transit. Um, how we pioneer things like bus rapid transit, all the work that we did on with SEI in terms of trying to capitalize on the investment in fast tracks. So anyway, but maybe it would be more appropriate if staff put together that list of ways that Dr. Cog, they think that, the, that Dr. Cog can um, effectuate change on this one. Mr. Chair, Council Member Kanich. Oh, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I guess the only thing I would say about that is reminder that this is the regional plan, it's not the Dr. Cog plan. It is not an action plan specifically just for an agency, it's actually a regional. And I go back to our vision statement, you know, which is about transportation and land use and quality of life, right? Diverse network of vibrant, connected, lifelong communities with a broad spectrum of housing, transportation, employment, world class natural and built environments. We don't do open space either but our vision of the region. So I just, I don't want us to evaluate one criteria of the plan based on whether or not it's solely within Dr. Cog's control when we have many areas of this plan that are about what we want the region to look like and we accept the fact in other areas of the plan that we don't do open space, but we know it's important for quality of life, you know? We, and so I guess for me, um, I, 
I just don't want us having different standards on, I mean, this is about what we want the region to look like, right? I want clean water. Does Dr. Cog do that? No, but, but it's something I want in the region, and I don't want to say let's not put that in the vision because it's not part of what we do. So I just, I want us to think broad because that's what the plan is, and, and reminder that each section of the plan has both here are Dr. Cog action steps, as well as local community ideas, none of which are binding, but they, it, it dances. It dances between here's what we want it to look like, here's what one entity can do, here's what individual entities can do. And so I don't think we have to be tied um, to, and, and I also just want to remind, we had a very, very vibrant, you know, conversation about the ways that housing impacts the region and most of our local communities, um, whether you had a lot or didn't have a lot of deed restricted housing, people had seniors and they had, they agreed it was an issue. And so this is one of only two foundational measures, you know, that looks at that. So if we, if we weren't going to have this, then we'd need to find something else, I think, to address that. And so if folks are thinking about taking it out, I'd really ask them, what would you replace it with? Because I'm happy. I would love to have a foundational measure that was just about affordability of housing. I think this is a much more moderate approach, so, but if some, I just, if, if we take this out, I'm going to ask for what's the replacement to address that very, you know, we had something like 18 or 20 members on that committee, so, all right, thanks. So I have uh, three people in the queue, Noon, Teal, and Malay. Before we do that real quick, I wanted to do a quick time check. We have 27 more minutes in this room. We have at least three more items to discuss and one more agenda item after that. So uh, I'm, I'm hoping that we can wrap this item up fairly quickly, understanding that staff is going to do some research for us and bring back more information. Mayor Noon. So I hate to muddy the water a little bit, but in thinking about this, if someone chooses to live perhaps in a higher, you know, um, housing model because now they're walking or biking to work, that the transportation happens to be whatever the transportation is, but they're not using it. They're literally biking and walking. That's not going to get measured here, yet we're putting that, now we're adding bike and ped into that other measure. So I'm having a hard time now that one measure has all modes of transportation and another doesn't, because if you walk, your transportation cost is zero. So I, I, when I started thinking about how I'm going to use all of these as, as to really start to model things, I feel like, you know, someone could make a choice to live in a very expensive high-rise downtown because they can walk everywhere they go, and that may help, that would certainly be skewed, and so I don't, I don't know, I know it muddies the water, but then take out the other modes of transportation and the other travel time. I, I mean, if we're going to put the cost in one and the, t you know, we're not going to have it in the cost, but we're going to have it in the time. I'm a little confused about that. Councilmember Thiel. As a representative of a freestanding community, I mean, I'm very much intrigued by this calculation that's trying to get us to, or the, this measure that talks about uh, cost of housing and transportation, because that's something the vast majority of my population deals with all the time, is the cost of transportation to get where they actually work. We're a lot like Val's, uh, uh, you know, town, in that most of our folks don't work within our town. They got to get on I-25. But right now, I'm a no. I just don't get how this is going to help us really measure, help us solve, help us go to a solution. And I great, great. The measures are great, but you measure what you can fix. You, fi you know, nothing gets fixed unless you measure it. Nothing gets done unless you measure it. I don't see where this goes to action. So right now I'm a no. I am in favor, though, of Commissioner Jones' idea of pushing this back to staff for more research, more data, to maybe help me get to a yes. Mayor Pro Tem Malay. I, and I just wanted to clarify that I wasn't saying this should, this should not be included in Metro Vision. What I was saying is that I didn't think a target was appropriate for it, that I thought it was more appropriate uh, being considered like we are considering Measure 1A. So I just wasn't saying it's not part of our responsibility or our scope of, uh, not responsibility, but our scope of what we're looking at from a regional planning organization, but my concern is with setting a target for it. Councilmember Stolz. 
I think that this measure addresses exactly what Mayor Noon was bringing up. I, I actually don't think it muddies the waters at all. I think if you live in a very expensive high rise in downtown, your transportation costs are lower because you have more access to a pedestrian things. You have more access to bus. So that was what some of those factors are. So I would hope that gets explained. At least one of us isn't understanding it right. Commissioner Partridge. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm going to make some general comments because I, this is what I kind of said all the way along when we look at this. When we really look at Metro Vision, Metro Vision is a guiding document. We all have our planning commissions. We use our planning commission as a guiding document. It's not a regulatory document. And that's a very, very important thing because it does not tie you to a policy. So this guiding document is a visionary document that we can just say, hey, do we kind of agree that we should have great air quality, less, less congestion? Yeah, that's easy to say. Do we all want everybody to be successful? Yes. That's easy to say in a non-policy document, non-regulatory document. It's a vision document. My challenge comes, and I think we all have to be concerned with this, this visionary document that we create, what we've seen in the past is then turn into a regulatory document when it comes to tip scoring. It has used, it is a true measure that measure is our foundational measure. That is a document, that is a measure you have to go by when you get scoring, it's been 25%. That's where it cautions. Yes, we have that chance to vote that in one way or the other, but history tells us what we're doing here tonight and what we're gonna do at our, when we accept this or don't accept it, it is going to be a regulatory measurement for us. I just remind that. And Mr. Chair, I would just, uh, say we've had a vote I think we can kind of push things along just out of courtesy for all our time and whether we get into the specifics about each indiv individual uh, foundation measure and our target may we just move forward I think we kind of have our vote to move on to Dr. Cogward so um, what I'm going to suggest is that we move this on staff understands the items that they're going to come back and have further explanation and discussion on. Um, so this will be further discussed and voted on again at an, a later date. So the next items are 9A and 9B, and I think that what we need to d discuss on these, as was pointed out, they both received a supermajority vote, but the conversation is first, do we need both of them or just one? And if just one, which one is it? I would open the floor for discussion. Councilmember Teal. So I would advocate uh, um, getting rid of 9A and making our actual foundational measure 9B. If for no other reason, um, I think we all understood at first blush what a person delay per trip meant. Whereas, you know, thank you Shakti for asking what the heck are we trying to measure in 9A? So um, I feel more comfortable putting my name on a document that somebody could read and understand with little explanation. Commissioner Jones. I find myself in agreement with George on this one. I mean, I actually think you could make the case for having both, but I think 9A get, is somewhat problematic in terms of um, what is peak is going to change over time. You know, it used to be rush hour was, a rush, was an hour, now it could be three and four hours. And as that changes, then the, the peak between on and off becomes less meaningful. So I think 9B um, is the, the superior measure. Um, and I think it's particularly superior now that we've clarified that it include, includes all modes. So then again, we can measure the benefits of, of what we're doing with transit and bike and ped and, and other measures. I did have one question about 9B that maybe staff could clarify. and. Um, I've, I've heard person delay per, per capita might be the easier way to ensure that all trips, say by bike and pet, are automatically in the calculation versus looking at a per trip measurement. Could you speak to that difference? Inquisitive looks. <laughs> I, I would have to get back with you on this. Um, if I'm understanding correct, that's from a different source than our model. This is model data, the 9, 9B, because it's per trip. The 
data that we've presented in the past in our annual congestion report is taking the vehicle delay divided by per cap divided by the population. I, I would have to get back with you. I just don't have the information in front of me to, to give a thorough answer. Mayor Horn. So I would suggest that we measure both because they're measuring two different things. And I think we actually address them differently. The um, peak versus off peak is a congestion measure. And we actually allocate funds for projects that are anti, you know, congestion road, um, roadways, for example. So I think that's a critical measure. Um, the other one is a more personal measure. It is true that congestion could eventually be 24 hours a day, but for the moment, given our current situation, I think we ought to keep both measurements. Council Member Plass. George, brace yourself. I'm going to agree with you also. So both the city and county of Boulder will be agreeing with you. Again, you guys got to stop saying that out loud. Sorry. Um, so I want to make sure that is on the, on the record that, uh, oh, go ahead. Yes, please, <laughs> duly noted. Well, you want to strike that, George? Um, okay. And, and I just, I, I think the 9B is a superior one, and it's, and it's also more intuitive, I think, in terms of understanding, although I understand the, the points that we just made about 9A and that they measure different things to a certain extent, so I appreciate that. Um, but they're, in, a, in a way, they're related, too. Obviously, that's why they're, they're paired under 9. So I would just go with 1, and I'd do 9B and um, would support council member Teal's suggestion. Mayor Pro Tem Veal. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and I agree with Mayor Horn. I, I think 9A specifically measures the, the roadway network, the congestion portion of it, while 9B is actually measuring the transportation network. What type of transportation do we have? And so then the question becomes, do we want to measure both of them? They, they're, they're two different animals completely. And, and, and I feel that we need to measure both of them. Councilmember Kanich. I'm good with just 9B, um, but I was going to just suggest as a process point, we just we, we could have three options and everyone just has to vote for one as a straw poll just to kind of speed things up, which is to say, do you prefer both, just A or just B? And we can kind of see where we're at, I mean, to know how much time we should spend on this, because I'm sensitive to the amount of time left. Second. <laughs> I, I, it, was a, it was a comment to the chair, uh, so I, if you want to take it as a motion, that's fine, but that requires a vote. If the chair just thought that might be the next step to go, I, then I don't think he'd need a vote. Ditto. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I'm not hearing um, a lot of support in, in favor of just 9A, but let's, let's take that one first since it is first. Is, is, can you show me uh, by a show of hands of how many people would would rather us use just 9A, okay? So then the next question is, how many people by a show of hands would have us use just 9B? Okay, and then how many by a show of hands would support us using both? I think we can move both of them forward as a recommendation to the board from MIMVIC, and we can move on. So the next item we have, which was 53 to 40, 53 percent yes, 47 percent no, is foundational measure four, which is on page three of the agenda. We. Hope and uh, this is cost burdened households and I'll open the floor for discussion. Councilmember Shakti. Isn't there some way to do the same thing without a number? Like that looks to me like the median household income thereabouts or? Uh, Mr. Calford. What, what's the question? Help me understand the question. This we're talking about the one that uses the fifty thousand dollars. Correct. Correct. Um, if we set something there that will change as the economy changes, it won't become defunct. Oh, so the the issue is the thing that was brought up earlier is we're we're beholden to the data that we have, right? And the way that HUD reports this data out, or I guess the American Community Survey, is 
you can sort of see on the slide here, these are the sort of the income strata that they report out, right? So less than 20, this, this is what we have to play with to actually report this out. So we're, we are, again, beholden to what the data providers provide to us. Council Member Kanich. Thanks, and I just wanted to kind of talk about the history to remind folks that this original measure in the first draft came out just basically saying how many people are, house, are, are, are housing burdened, and that included people who were earning $200,000 a year who were spending more than 30% of their income on housing. And so we actually had a really big discussion. George and I agreed that day. What? That it made sense. So, so these okay. bans came from our discussion <laughs> to say we care the most about those who are cost burdened on the bottom. And so I just wanted to kind of just remind everyone that where this particular one came from, it, it came from us. And it was actually, you know, it seems like some people, you know, I, I, there wasn't a lot of dissension to the idea of narrowing the goal. So that's, that's how this came about. So. Mayor Noon. So Shockey is just troubled by putting a set number that will change. If it's according to the American uh, community, survey. community Survey, then put in there whatever the median household is at the Community Survey. Make that your, your thing. So it will change as the dat as the data point changes. But they don't report this data based on the area median income. They, they, they report it based on the income bands that, that was what, really what we investigated. So again, we're, we are in some ways stuck with so, these categories. Let, the area median right now in this region is 70 some odd thousand. I mean, it's, it's, it's actually above even sort of the maximum band that, that they provide. So we, we're, we're sort of saddled with these. Right, but you picked which band you want yes so pick the same band moving forward okay yes yes absolutely yeah. okay so I'm just saying you don't have a number you refer to the document and which piece of the data in that document and then it would float it will go with inflation or deflation is that solve what you're thinking Shockey? yeah although it might be hard because if they sort of arbitrarily change their band it might screw up our measure but I, I it is addressing the issue and right I mean it's either static or it has to flow with the data those are your two choices mayor horn so um, I have the same struggle with this that I did with the other housing one which is um, I'm assuming that when you say baseline today 69.4 almost 70 percent of our people earning less than 50,000 per year are housing costs burdened and I I would just need to I, I think it's a great aspiration but if we're going to put a specific percent in here I just need to know what in the world we think is going to help that is everybody going to get a raise are we going to increase the minimum wage are housing is housing going to go into the dumper I mean what because today if we look at what's happening currently I would expect it to go up not down Mayor Sir <clears throat> This, the, I'm, I'm okay with somewhat a, a concept of measuring this, but I have trouble putting a target on this because um, our aging demographic is going to explode in this time frame, and uh, I'm not exactly sure what that's going to do to this, but um, that's not typically the, the folks we're worried about. Um, as far as transportation and transit and contributing to air quality, um, so I, this one's a, this one's a little tough for me to say. Um, hey, but if we're talking about uh, working households, um, and I'm not sure, you know, I would necessarily put an age on that. But if we're talking about working households, but you're again, you're saying you're somewhat we're somewhat slaves to the to the data as it's reported. But I know that our demographics. Uh, on how many folks we have over 60 is just going to be growing exponentially. And so I have, I, have, I have trouble putting that unless we've actually. Okay. I want to um, just mention real quickly that when we looked at this a little bit, a little deeper dive in Brad's voting system, 21% said that they were concerned with the measure. 15% said they were concerned with the target, and 32% said they were concerned with both, just by way of reference. Mayor Proto-Malay. 
You know, in looking at uh, some of the information that was up here, somebody said, you know, what continuous support activity are we going to be doing? Again, back to kind of Mayor Horn's comments, what support activity is Dr. Cog going to be doing to move the needle on this? And you guys, I think these are really important, and I think they're part of a regional vision. I'm not suggesting that. I have a real concern with putting a target next to something that, um, with this organization, uh, and, and as much as we all may say, oh, it's, it's, it's just our regional vision, it, it's our regional vision that has historically turned into our TIP. I mean, you even said it to me tonight. Well, that's how you influence it, with your TIP criteria. And um, I don't think that that's an appropriate use of our federal transportation dollars. And um, like it or not, that seems to be where we end up when we start targeting and measuring something. So I, I, again, I think we can measure it, and I'm very comfortable measuring it. I'm very comfortable with the statement that um, we want to reduce the number of households in this, and it, in this uh, region that are cost burden. And there's some best management practices that we can identify in our metro vision to try and reduce those cost burdens. But when we set a target for this organization to attempt to achieve, I want to know what activity this organization, what ongoing continuous support this organization is going to be giving to meet that target. And Commissioner Jones. Well, this is starting to feel like the conversation we just had on the last foundational measure. And it could be that um, what staff brings back to us on that point about how Dr. Cog can influence um, that measure would be appropriate for this. I also, um, I think um, Robin's comments about it's a regional vision, we're not the only ones working to achieve this is, are also um, important to keep in mind. But I, I do think we need to remember that Dr. Cog does a lot of work with local governments and um, encouraging best practices that have nothing to do with the TIP. And I think we keep scaring ourselves from having a strong regional vision by going back to a TIP discussion. That's not the, the conversation that we're having now. So anyway, I, I, I'm watching the clock tick, and I think we're going to have to have staff bring back more information about how the needle gets moved on this. But I, I still think that it's incredibly important to have this as a piece of our regional vision. Commissioner Holland. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I've been listening to this debate, and I, I'm, I'm trying to break it down to a kind of a, a more clear vision, and that is right now, uh, for a variety of re reasons, a lot of developers are not, uh, are not building uh, uh, affordable housing. And even at the $75,000 uh, level, um, uh, Many of those people are cost burdened in the relation to their, their housing and transportation costs. Um, I just looked through it, went on a visit recently to Cherry Creek to look at some of the new, new uh, apartments that are, that are coming up. We're not seeing condos because of the defects bill. And the starting um, price for a one bedroom condo in the Cherry Creek area is over $3,000 a month. So you begin to look at the cost, uh, the cost and salaries that one has to make to meet that, to meet the, even the 30 percent uh, level of uh, income to uh, to housing costs, and it beca it begins to preclude even even uh, some uh, a larger family or those who are are uh, uh, burdened in the in their in their costs of uh, of housing. So uh, I agree with. Uh, uh, Commissioner Jones and, and others who reflect the attitude that that um, we we have to do more and we have to challenge ourselves as an organization uh, to encourage um, affordable housing uh, opportunities uh, if, uh, for that level of income and, and I think it's incumbent upon all of us to begin to consider that in, in, in all our roles in, as, as uh, government leaders. Councilmember Teal. I'm not quite as intimidated by this uh, measure as uh, uh, Mayor Potemale is um, from a 
um, from a philosophical point of view. The only problem is I'm starting to try to put math on this one, and we've got a moving targets. We have moving targets for our math. And so then it gets to the point of we're going to end up measuring mush. We're not going to have anything truly solid to measure. So, Mr. Chairman, actually, I would move to exclude this from the fundamental measures. Okay, I was I was going to mention that we actually have um, several options. We can we can talk about this as a measure, but not a foundational measure. We can talk about it as a measure without a target, or a foundational measure without a target. Or we can, as Councilmember Vitil suggests, take it off the conversation list. However, um, we are at 557 and we still have two more items and both of those items are basically 50-50. One is 50-50 and one is 53-47. We're obviously not going to cover this and the next two items in the next three minutes. Um, so we will not send this with recommendation from this committee to the Dr. Cog board at the May meeting. We do not have a June meeting of our of the board so this will this will be we have a little bit more time to get this to the board in July I'm probably making Brad Calvert very nervous right now but what I would suggest is that we uh, set aside the rest of the conversation on foundation foundational measure four and the last two foundational measure one and five for our next meeting which is June 5th and staff will bring back information on the items that we've asked them to, and we can have continued the conversation on these three that we did not complete. Mayor Cernanic. I agree with that. And um, the, the one piece as, we, as we're looking to actually package this to go to the board, um, I'd probably put it at a, a, a higher level piece instead of just putting all the, the measures in front of folks. Uh, but to say that what we're really trying to do at, at kind of a level is look at transit, transport, mobility, predictability. You know, those three are kind of slash, 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 but that air quality, density, and then something that talks about accessibility, attainability, or if you want to, uh, to get to the P word prosperity across <laughs> the region. Um, and you know, that's what we're really trying to get at. And then jump into the measures from there, but actually give folks at the higher level, um, that's really what we're trying to, to be getting at in, in this. Thank you. So again, given the time, we are going to um, forego informational item, agenda item five, and that will be presented at our next meeting as well. Our next meeting is June 3rd at four o'clock. Are there any other, other matters? Council Member Kanich. Just in closing, can we clarify, I'm counting that we're coming back on four items, number one, number three, number four, and number five, so, so that we can all come as prepared as possible. And it would be great if you could present them in order, <laughs> in the memo, <laughs> so that we can all follow along. And also, it's helpful if you have history. So like say, this is where we started, this was the revision, you know, and then here's the relevant data you requested so that we're referencing one or two pieces of paper in order rather than having to cross-reference. So when, and, and I would love, because this H plus T thing especially, it's very difficult when there's really great data in a PowerPoint that we don't have a copy of and not in the memo. And so it seems to me on that one in particular, it's very important that the data be in the memo, not just in the PowerPoint. So I, those are process points, but I want to make sure I'm on the same page as, as you, Chair, on what we're coming back on so we can yes. all come prepared. Okay. Correct. All right, and at 6 o'clock, we are adjourned. Yeah, please, please don't take your keypad with you, but if you would.